So what might those renewed concerns over tariffs and trade mean for everything, really, from stocks to bonds to commodities? Here to talk about that is Ben Phillips, chief investment officer with Event Shares, to talk about the equity markets. Colin Martin is director of fixed income at the Schwab Center for Financial Research. He'll focus on bonds. And Scott Nations covers commodities. He is president of Nation Shares. Gentlemen, welcome to all of you. Thanks for joining our roundtable tonight. Ben, I'm going to start with you. I know that you and a lot of other people think that basically a lot of this this trade war talk is already in the market and the market thinks we will get a deal. But the comments late this afternoon seem to suggest that things are not moving quite as smoothly as the market thought. What do you think? Well, I think that's right, that the market has been pricing this in. It's been a big driver of the rally year to date, in our opinion. And so I think you're, you're right on that assessment. You know, I think the, the market's also looking at today and saying this is part of Trump's negotiating style. He's a little bit of a brinkmanship you know, person. And so he's saying this is, this is something that I need to talk about, I need to address. I think there was talk about him caving over the weekend. He doesn't like when people say that he's a caver or anything like that. So I think we're in a position where he's trying to show a stronger hand and that he's very serious about these negotiations. Colin, fixed income is seen as the safety trade, and course yields went down today, but at a time when the Fed last week signaled no rate cut anytime soon, so yields went up. So you're getting real mixed uh, winds, uh, you know, uh, crosswinds here for the fixed income markets. Where do you think rates are going with all that's going on right now? Well, with tariff concerns, which can potentially slow global growth and lead to lower investor confidence, you know, that can help pull yields lower. Uh, as well as stock market declines. When there's periods of market volatility, investors flock to the safety that U.S. Treasuries provide, and that demand pushes their prices up and, and pulls their yields lower. So this just supports our case at Schwab that yields are likely to stay low. Aren't they already pretty low at this point, though? They're pretty low, but the threat of tariffs uh, opens the door for a potential rate cut. Um, you know, the, the, the Federal Reserve last week did spin a relatively positive outlook, but if we do see slower growth, uh, both domestically and abroad, and if we see tighter financial conditions, uh, that could lead to a cut by the Fed. Now, that can be a good thing for investors who own bonds because lower yields can push up their prices, right. uh, but it still makes it more difficult for investors looking for yields. Scott, handicap the reaction in the various commodity markets that you, uh, that you watch. I know that we would see reaction in copper, in oil, but the agricultural markets have been very sensitive and very volatile given this negotiating period. Uh, very much, Sue, and we would expect agricultural commodities like soybeans to really take it on the chin today, and they did. But you mentioned copper. I would also look at crude oil. Both of those probably give us the best window into what's really going on here because uh, China manufacturing economy uses so much of both. And as you would expect, both copper and crude oil had really ugly opens, but they came all the way back and more. And copper ended up nearly 1%, crude oil up at least 1%. And so what does that say? That says that the market, which has a mind of its own, does believe that the trade deal is still on track and that we're likely to get a deal because both of those commodities would lead the market lower if we really had to throw in the towel on a trade deal. Ben, we have a list of the companies that are, have the greatest revenue exposure to China. We're going to show you the top five here, and I'm struck by the fact that four of those five are technology-related. In fact, they're chip-related. And if we broaden this out to the top ten, eight out of the ten are computer chip-related. I mean, it doesn't get any more basic than that when it comes to technology's exposure to these trade talks right now, right? That's right. The tech companies are the greatest exposed. That's why you saw kind of pre-market and on the open, they were some of the worst performers. But they did, they clawed their way back, too. So some of them did come back. I and mean, we were looking at Xy Xilinx and Skyworks as two names that we own. And those are names that, you know, we recently just started building positions in based on our view of a little more progress on the trade talks. So, you know, we're waiting and seeing if those go down further, we're going to, you know, potentially look at it as an opportunity to buy. If I can stay with you, Ben, you also say that it, the individual investors should maybe get a little defensive in health care and other sectors like that. What names on the defensive side do you like? Yeah, so in healthcare, you know, this is again different different policies, not China trade, but we like you know healthcare overall. But we like the managed care, so we like Anthem there. Uh, we like United Health, for example. And so there's you know some of those managed care providers in healthcare. We own some Teladoc, and so we like some of the uh, health tech companies as well. But those mm -hmm. are some of the names in healthcare that are attractive in our view. And Scott, before we let you go, you had talking about crosswinds, the crude oil market. You've got Saudi Arabia and the rest of OPEC that would love to see the price of oil go higher, and yet. 
if you get the uh, the trade tensions here and the tariffs go in, you're going to get a slowdown that's going to push oil prices lower. What are you doing here? Uh, I think that when you look at crude oil, you have to look at the fact that the big producers overseas have done a really good job of moderating their production. That is, they've, they've scaled back their production a little bit, and that's why we see crude oil prices a little bit higher than they were at the end of last year. I think they're going to continue to do that within reason. They realize that they do have to answer to the American people and to President Trump, and so they're not going to get ahead of themselves, Bill. But I would expect that they're going to continue to be disciplined when it comes to production. I think prices are likely to stay uh, about where we've seen and maybe get near $70. On that note, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Ben Phillips with Event Shares, Colin Martin with Charles Schwab, and Scott Nations with Nations Shares.